Welcome back to another Division 2 upload. I'm Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and today I will be covering all the latest news from the Division State of the Game stream that just concluded. We got all sorts of updates incoming for the new update, TU 10.1, including loadout swaps, PvP, loot scaling, and a total avoidance of the ongoing raid PDF issue. But before we begin, many thanks to all my new subscribers as the channel has continued to grow and has quickly passed the 52,000 sub mark. But just in case you are not yet a sub, please take just a moment to smash that sub button and ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. All right, let's begin. So today's State of the Game stream was conducted by Hamish, Bruce, and Nikki, and of course they started off the stream the same way they always do with priority alerts. Now, as everyone knows, yesterday there was a maintenance that included quite a few items, and here they are. So first off, the largest item was the level 30 raid was deployed. So for those of you that do not own the Woni or Warlords of New York DLC, you now have the opportunity to jump into the Iron Horse raid and get your feet wet. They also fixed an issue with players becoming invincible while entering a cutscene with their shield deployed. They fixed an issue with players getting stuck in the Seasons tab. Thank you, that seems to be happening to me. Fixed an issue where Season projects were still showing completed even after the Seasons had reset. Thank you, also happening to me. They fixed a, an issue that I hadn't even heard about with an unlimited RPG bug, but that will not be fixed or was not fixed yesterday. It will be fixed tomorrow. So that'll be Thursday. Apparently, if you were running a specific loadout during the raid, you could just get unlimited RPGs and just basically speed run your way through the raid. Now, uh, in tandem with that, they're also going to be taking a look at the leaderboards because obviously the leaderboards would have to be reset or adjusted if, if players were running through with a specific build getting the unlimited RPGs. And for those of you agents that are still playing Division 1, Global Event Strike will go live on July the 13th. And then they finished up the priority alerts by letting everyone know that State of the Game and I guess a large portion of the uh, massive staff will be going on summer break for pretty much the entire month of July. And so State of the Game will not return live to Twitch until August the 5th. So the bulk of today's stream was dedicated to the changes players should expect as part of title update 10.1. And Bruce described this as an interim patch. It's not going to be very large, and it's only going to include adjustments with skills and PvP and balance adjustments, so no new content. So first, I want to dive into the changes that Bruce talked about. So here we go. So first off, loadout swapping and skill cooldowns will be fixed as part of TU 10.1, and this is really centered around the issues with the revive hive preventing players from changing their loadouts. So what they've done is they've reduced the number of base charges at skill tier zero from four to one charge. And this is gonna reduce your overall revive hive cooldown from 240 seconds to reach all four charges to just 180 seconds for that one charge. These new changes will now only require the recharge of that one charge. So it's gonna take three minutes until you're charged up and then you can swap out over to your new loadout. Bruce also discussed some changes with Foundry Bulwark, that's the new Iron Horse Raid specific tank shield build gear set. They're pretty happy with where it is, but the three piece bonus they feel is a bit overpowered. So what they've done is they've adjusted the self heals on the three piece from 3% down to 1%, but they've also offset it by gaining 50% shield health now as part of the three piece bonus. Bruce also discussed how the Forge, that's the named holster, is going to add 50% shield health at skill tier 6, which is really interesting. So you're really going to be able to bulk up the damage input capacity of your shields by equipping the Forge. And finally, for you rifle users, plus 50% ammo capacity will go live in TU 10.1. As part of TU 10.1 as well are going to be a lot of PvP balance changes. Starting off with first, Assault Rifle's overall strength is going to be increased, that's buffed, by 9%. The Firestarter Chem Launcher explosion damage is going to be reduced by 50% for PvP. Now also included in Title Update 10.1 is going to be an identity overhaul for the Booster Hive for both PvE and PvP. So right now, if you're standing in the radius and being affected by the booster hive, you are getting weapon handling, melee damage, which I didn't know, and weapon damage, which I did know. So as part of title update 10.1, you're going to lose the weapon damage, but you're going to gain hazard protection. 
So at base skill tier zero, you're going to get 20% for all three weapon handling, melee damage, and hazard protection, while at skill tier 6, you're going to get 60% for all three of those. Also, a change across the board to all hives are the drone flight speeds. They're going to be increased, and this will be affected by skill tiers. Another couple changes for PvP include a striker drone buff by 38%, and all deployed skills will now take four times more damage from hostile players, and this is going to allow a little bit of counterplay uh, and allow players to destroy skills a bit easier. And to finish off the PvP balance changes, Bruce did briefly touch on the fact that they are looking into the Riot Foam Chem Launcher. They're still contemplating lowering the base stuck time from three seconds, but he doesn't want to do any mass changes to this, the chem launcher, because this is the counter to chicken dancing. So if you lower the stuck time, then chicken dancing is going to be coming back. Switching gears over to Nikki, and the bulk of his discussion time was centered around loot and loot scaling and loot quality. And he did mention that his team is going to be using TU 10.1 to implement the second and final steps of certain changes that they couldn't quite finish up in Title Update 10. Included in this part of the discussion, of course, Nikki came to armed with graphics, and these all have to do with loot power distribution for pre 10.0, our current, which is 10.0, and moving forwards into TU 10.1. So this first graph, now showing on screen, is the loot power distribution for pre 10.0. And as you can see, everything is quite skewed to the left. As you have a higher drop percentage, you have lower average rolls. And then as you move across the graph from left to right, the average rolls, if they do increase, the drop chance comes considerably down. Next up is the loot power distribution power curve for current or title update 10.0. This is what we are currently experiencing in the game. And they changed it from this gradual curve from left to right to almost a bell curve. So they've moved the average rolls quite a bit over so you can see the power levels of the drops you are getting are increasing uh, but still for players that are looking to min max their builds it's still quite difficult to get those really high percentage attribute rolls based on this loot power distribution table here's another view of the current title update 10 loot power distribution tables and as you can see it's quite skewed for this kind of this middle of the road bell curve they want to give everyone some above average rolls but still you can see over on the right side in that red hexed in area it's still very difficult to get those really high god rolled items now showing on your screens is the loot power distribution tables for title update 10.1. So this will be the incoming changes that we should expect. And as you can see, the bell curve has been shifted over to the right. And this is aimed to be more generous with God rolls and also with double God rolls. I guess we'll have to wait and see how this proposed change is going to affect our live game. Of course, rainbow rolls were discussed and right now they don't have the capacity to be able to adjust the scalers or the RNG for these loot items, but they're trying to work on something so that they will have manual adjustment capabilities in Title Update 11. There will also be changes to loot in the DZ, as the DZ is presently set to challenge difficulty and it's going to be scaled up to heroic from now on. Nikki concluded his portion of the stream by discussing that they are moving away from random exotic loot drops, especially on boss drops on legendary difficulty, and they're going to add these exotic loot drops now to the mission completion. Hamish quickly came on towards the end of the stream to discuss the Phoenix Down event. That's going to be the next apparel event. It's going to begin on July the 14th through August the 3rd, and of course it will be coupled with double XP. And I'd like to now show you those vanity sets. Here is Agent N. Agent Garcia. Agent Hoopster. And Agent Sutton.
Towards the end of stream, they also briefly discussed the next Keener's Legacy Manhunt target, better known as Luna. I'll show you the requirements now on screen. They include Battery Park, Financial District, Civic Center, and Coney Island missions. Of course, you're going to have your bevy of control points, bounties, and you're going to have to complete Pathway Park, Wall Street, The Tombs, Coney Island Ballpark, and Coney Island Amusement Park. Since the state of the game team is going to be on summer break, they also briefly flashed up the next league, which will be known as the Luna League, which will include a patch for the Luna Moth. You're going to have to complete Pathway Park on hard, the Tombs on hard, get explosive kills, Coney Island Ballpark on hard, Wall Street on challenging, and make hostiles bleed. Hamish finished up his portion of the stream by showing off the third manhunt target, Huntsman, and it's going to include targets and missions in DC. You're going to have to complete District Union Arena, Air and Space Museum, Jefferson Plaza, and Viewpoint Museum, and of course, Control Points and Bounties. And to finish up my recap for today's Stay of the Game stream, I wanted to say that chat for this stream was certainly lit with questions asking about what is going to happen with the world's first raid members that are rumored to have used this uh, exclusive or confidential leaked document to help them through the raid. This is something that I posted a video on yesterday. I'll include a link to it in the video description. And I can say that between the mods and the moderators for today's stream, it was a question that was avoided quite a bit. They kept referring back to what I'm about to show you on screen. This is from last week. This is from July the 3rd, and it has to do with Operation Iron Horse. So let me read this out to you. Regarding the integrity of the race to world first, we are aware of the leaked documents containing gameplay information and mechanical spoilers about the raid. We want to be clear that this did not come from Massive and we are extremely concerned about the troubling implications. An investigation is underway to uncover what happened, after which we will proceed with appropriate measures. So once again, nobody from the stream team today wanted to dive into this. None of the mods over in chat wanted to handle it as well. I saw quite a few messages about it being deleted by the chat moderators. And I don't see much happening on this front, especially with most of the uh, team from Massive going on vacation for the next month. I mean, this ideally this this vacation could not have come at a better time. They can simply just disappear and my feeling is nothing is going to happen on this front. They're just going to let it possibly just try to cool off and go away, uh, which I think is quite possibly the wrong way to be doing this. Um, action needs to be taken. Sanctions need to be given, especially after what happened with the uh, damage exploit and so many players getting smashed into the ground with that. Uh, it would certainly seem contradictory that now that they have evidence of misguided measures going into this raid that they're signed and to just kind of almost like put their their heads into the sand and just kind of just wait for it to, <laughs> wait for all this fire to just kind of burn off all right i think i'm going to wrap up today's recap right here and as always i look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below if you haven't yet taken the time to do so please smash that sub button and ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my youtube channel if you like the video rate it with a thumbs up if not with a thumbs down links to support my full-time content creation outside of youtube include patreon and teespring both in the video description below don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.